you know, I'm no expert in 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 anything really, but I think you know, in researching this film, we we Brendan and I looked into um, regenerative medicine. You know, mm -hmm. read up on stem cell research and and just kind of what's going on in these fields. Um, and you know, one of the very compelling experiments was uh, your daughter's name, Lila Morales. Maybe she can help another kid out there. You can leave now. Do you remember a little girl who passed away last Friday? They say they don't have her. I'm trying to figure out what to tell the mother. I can hear Okay, perfect. Um... How are you doing? First of all, where are you at? at I'm at the Zachary Hotel, which is which okay. is close to the Music Box Theater. So there you go. Are you excited tonight for the for the screening? I am. I am. I mean, I love this place. I've had two shorts play here mm -hmm. before. The Music Box is a stunning theater, so this this really feels like home. Yeah, they're gonna have the orchestra going. I was there last night for opening night, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Cool. Oh, I can't uh, wait. I'm excited. I watched the movie. I'm glad it was actually daylight when I was watching it. <laughs> I guess it probably would have had a different reaction. I'm sure many will tonight when they're coming out of that screen. First, I was thinking like, Lord, where the heck did you get all these ideas? <laughs> I'm like, what spawned? Oh, there's so many things going on in this film. And I was just like wrecking my brain all afternoon too, thinking like, what sort of messages you can take away? Because there's not one, there's several different things going on here. But my, my person, like, where, what was the inception? Was this like a real life experience you had that kind of spawned these to, to this movie? Was this people, you know, conversations you've had? I'm curious where the genesis of it all started. Yeah, it's it's an autobiography, basically. Um, no, I uh, I first read uh, Mary Shelley's Frankenstein when I was pretty young, and mm. and was was blown away by the film, but also I mean the film, the novel, but also uh, really excited that it was written by a woman. Um, the the novels that I had read by women before that were kind of marriage and manners petticoat dramas and comedies and I couldn't really relate to them so just to have this sort of epic life and death story written by a woman uh caused me to immediately look her up and and learn about her life and her story um and the more I learned the more I felt like Victor Frankenstein was a real stand-in for her uh hmm. and and I and it just sort of had me asking this question like what if what if Dr. Frankenstein was a woman and what if in order to to create something with her mind, she had to reckon with her body to do it. Um, so, you know, a lot more, as you alluded to, c comes out of that idea. But I think that question was the thing that kind of kept nagging at me for years before I put any pen to paper. Um, that that was the real heart uh, at the center of this film, I think. Interesting. Oh, that's such an interesting story that, that kind of inspired you and, and the way you took that in. Um, you know, I, I kind of struggled and wrestled with thinking, are these characters villains or you feel empathy for them too? Because it's like at some points you can see their perspective and understand what they're trying to do here, but also they're doing it like something that's so out there, you know, that's something that's that's not the, the nicest or best thing too. And I struggled to figure out like, hmm, how do I view them? And I'm curious how you view these characters did you view him in a, in a villainous sense at all, or or are you felt kind of maybe sad or bad for them, or maybe kind of understood them? Yeah, I mean, I think you know, as as the, as a co writer of this film and as the director of this film, it's imperative for me to approach these characters with empathy. Yeah. But beyond that, I I really do understand them. I think you know, Rose, our Doctor Frankenstein. Uh, comes across more villainous at the beginning of the film, and Celie, our our mother character, kind of become, hardens over the course of the film. Mm -hmm. So so the audience might change their mind about who they really identify with. Um, and I did want to play with those expectations, but uh, yeah, no, to me, I to me, they both seem entirely reasonable. <laughs> I mean, it's like you ask the question, what would you do to save someone's life or, or your child's life? And the people would go to some crazy extremes they could never imagine, too, if you were ever in that situation. That's what makes you kind of feel that empathy. It's like 
yeah, they see a different perspective here and there it's about survival mode for them. It's literally do everything at all costs. I felt that was sort of the message, you know, from their point of view. Yeah. I think for both characters, you know, this, this is life or death, uh, you know, and it, and it, and it all ties in even for Rose, even for our Frankenstein, uh, in their motivations tie into their love for people that they are struggling to save or couldn't save. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's really relatable, even if some of the behavior in the movie is less relatable. Right. They go to extreme <laughs> uh, you know, ways to do it. But I mean, desperation make you do crazy things, too. Uh, I was curious. I, I like the aspect of her being a mortician. I thought that was intriguing because you had the nurse part. And that made sense, kind of combining them together to to do the medical aspect. But the mortician aspect, we don't get that sense we don't see it as much on screen you know there's certain horror movies here and there but i feel like these characters these people don't people don't understand them really or know what they do because it's something you don't want to hear about like oh you're around dead bodies that sort of thing no one wants to do that job too in, in a way and the people who do it i i give them a lot of props because it's so difficult to just be among dead bodies constantly but what made you pick her to be a mortician because i thought it was an interesting choice there well, um, you know, our medical advisor is a pathologist herself, uh, and she took two months off of her job to oh, wow. our onset medical advisor and in pre-production for this movie. And I think it really shows, I think, in the medical realism and how- Uh-huh, because the terms, there's so many terms there being used and everything. I'd imagine you wouldn't say that in someone who's working those jobs, like, what are they talking about? You know, you had to give them due respect to those. Yeah, people. we had to walk this fine line between, you know, not overdoing it with the jargon, but also making it feel real and believable. Mm -hmm. and definitely, uh, Ryan, our medical advisor, was a huge part of that. I mean, I think the motivation for making her a pathologist from the beginning was was practical you know if, yeah. if you're going to have someone that reanimates dead bodies they need to find them somewhere and also reanimating a child makes sense because they're smaller and easier to transport so you know in some ways it was i really was thinking practical. about the transport how did that happen too you know but yeah you're right a smaller body it probably would be easier to to get yeah. out of the you know the, the the refrigerator room basically yeah oh that yeah, that makes that makes sense once again in that uh, aspect too. Another curious thing, I was the pig. I mean, you usually don't see that too. You'd see like a dog maybe or you know some kind of pet you can relate to more but like uh, a pig who's a pet which some people do. Interesting choice once again. What made you decide on the pig? Well, you know, I'm no expert in 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 anything really, but I think, you know, in researching this film, we we Brendan and I looked into um regenerative medicine, you know, mm. read up on stem cell research and and just kind of what's going on in these fields. Um, and, you know, one of the very compelling experiments was, uh, I think it's at MIT, a team reanimated, reanimating dead brain cells in pigs. Um, so, it, I mean, I think the spark of it being a pig came from that uh, place, you know, that it really is an animal that for various reasons is, is favored in terms of research uh, in the scientific community, uh, you know, it was originally a rat. Rat was a lot less interesting. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't go with it. I, I thought the pig was a great choice. Yeah. Yeah. But the pig, uh, yeah. I mean, every day the pig was on set, I was asking myself, who wrote this? I can't believe we have to work with a pig. <laughs> what was it like? Was it was a tough coaching <laughs> pig up to be in a scene? Because I think it hit all the cues. It seemed like it was watching this. He's adorable, you know, but she's a pig. So, you know, if, if you think about kind of the limited time you have to make an indie film and yeah. all of the variables and things that can go wrong, waiting 10 minutes to see if a pig will sit down feels pretty um, heart stopping. You know? <laughs> but, <laughs> Literally. But I think it worked out. Yeah, it totally worked out. Yeah, I wouldn't have known, you know, it was very well behaved on set and hit all the cues. So there you go. Uh, and that... I like the open endedness of this film. Do you have more ideas for a future? Or is this like a one-off in your mind? Or because you can do a lot with this going forward. There's a lot of unanswered kind of questions still too. I was wrecking my brain over. But uh, how did you see this film when you were making it? That there's potential for more that you'd like to do or kind of just leave it open-ended for people to, to try to figure out their own interpretation? Yeah, I think, you know, 
I I do think my favorite films kind of like leave you hanging in the sense that you know you continue the story in your head after the film has ended. Um, and and my favorite films also I feel like are structured like a piece of music. You know, this one is this one is mm -hmm. a, a rondo. It's like very cyclical in a lot of ways. Um, so it feels to me like a self-contained piece. Um, and I and I don't have any plans of making a sequel, but um, but I I love. I love the idea that that people will leave hopefully wanting more. Yeah, no, I think it, it sets it up that way. It's like totally, this could go on. <laughs> there's a, a almost like a series, you know. There's there's more to this and and what happens next. So I, I personally, like you mentioned too, I love open ended things because it makes you think. You know, when you come out of a movie theater and, and you're thinking about it still, the ending and the story, you're kind of rethinking. I think that accomplishes a job because. Uh, you're still thinking after, you know, the the curtain went down, you know, in that way. Totally. No, those are, are, my... are you interested in sort of after making this movie? Because you went for it. I feel like you really didn't hold any anything back. You know, you really went for it with the gore, with the, with the story, with, with, with the messages you were sending with it, too. Um, is this sort of work you want to do going forward, this sort of genre, or is this sort of, a, a, you know, a thing you wanted to try, just completely do something different? No, I love genre. I mean, I mm -hmm. I kind of think of the stuff that I've done so far, the shorts and now this feature as mm -hmm. as sort of horror adjacent in the sense that, you know, they can't easily always be categorized as horror, but I'm hoping that fans of horror will like these movies. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that will be true for the next project. You know, the next thing I have up, I'm on, I'm currently on strike uh, as part of, as a, as a Writers Guild member. Mm -hmm. And so development has been paused on this feature, but my next film uh, called Gordon uh, is is more of a comedy uh, about a misdiagnosed sociopath who's trying to date women without killing them. Um, and the world around him turns out to be kind of sociopathic. Uh, so also not quite a horror movie, but I think kind of a horror adjacent movie. So that that might be the common theme in terms of the stuff that I'm drawn to. You're fascinated by the human psychology, it seems like, right? And the way people, because people are fascinated. Like I, I spoke to someone on a, on a horror movie. I think we we're talking about Chucky. And it's like, like the scariest things are people, not like the monsters or the jumping. People are the scariest. You know, that's why I think we have a fascination too with crime docs these days. And people just love indulging in that because it's the realness and and the, what humans are capable, I feel. it's 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 insane and scary too. No, I agree. And I think my favorite horror films are not supernatural. They are about people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was just talking to a friend about Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. I don't know if you know that movie, but like yes. uh, how banal that is, like how, you know, he's making a sandwich and then and then committing this horrible murder. Mm -hmm. and, and I just remember being completely fascinated and horrified by that when I first saw that movie as a kid. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, uh, like I said, the, the, the way people act are, are <laughs> scary to watch, you know, and sometimes the, the psyche is, is fascinating and scary at the same time. I think that's why it intrigues us and scares us at, this, at the same time, too, in that way. Um, this was a really imaginative piece of work you did here. I, I felt like it really made me think and, and of so many things that if even true real life things, you know, when it comes to sort of birth and all these sort of things, you know, having kids and the process and how it is, you know, life and death. I, I feel like there's a lot of human emotional elements to this film too, besides sort of the horror that, you know, we, that we're all surrounded by and are familiar with one way or the other. So uh, I thought you illustrated that really well too. So uh, really intriguing stuff there. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, you never know how your film's going to land. So it's really nice to hear. Absolutely. Can't wait to see you do more. And I'm excited to see the reaction and hear uh, what it is. I might make the drive down actually so I have some time tonight. So uh, if, if I do, I'd love oh, to. Oh, I be... hope I get to see you. Yeah. Thank you That'd so much. That'd be great. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to talk to me and uh, enjoy your big night tonight. I think people are going to have a great reaction too. And uh, you did some great work. So looking forward to to you putting out more stuff after the strike. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>